Good evening, and I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Newport News School Board for Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. On behalf of the members of the school board and Dr. Mitchell, I welcome each of you present this evening and those who are watching on TV and online. A quorum is present to transact the business of the school division. We will begin tonight's meeting with the invocation and pledge to the flag. Here to do the honors are two students from Discovery STEM Academy, Adriana Brown and Enzo Shorter. First, Adriana will come forward and deliver the invocation. And she will be followed by Enzo, who will come forward and deliver the pledge. So Adriana, if you would, please come forward and tell us a little bit about yourself before you get started. Uh, good evening, and thank you for allowing me this opportunity. My name is Adriana Brown, and I'm dis a Discovery STEM Academy Explorer. I'm in fifth grade, and I serve as the SEA co-president. My hope for tonight is that everyone is on one accord and that we um, gain real solutions to real problems. And I am thankful for this. I will be reading Phenomenal Woman by Maya Angelou. Thank you. Pretty woman wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say it's in the reach of my arm, the span of my hip, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. Enzo, will you please come forward and tell us a little bit about yourself before you get started? My name is Enzo Schur. I am a third grader at Discovery STEM Academy. I love going to school there because I learn a lot about science and math. I enjoy learning about space, especially the sun and the planets. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you for participating in tonight's meeting. You guys did a really wonderful job. Um, it's uh, all of us present here are really proud of you and honored that you're scholars in Newport News Public Schools. That's really exciting. I know you have family members and probably some school members who are here to support you. Would those individuals please stand? And thanks each one of you all for entrusting your children to us. And thanks for coming tonight. The next item on tonight's agenda is the school board recognition. So Dr. Mitchell, please join me at the podium. Thank you very much. Each year, the National School Boards Association Magna Award Program recognizes school districts taking bold and innovative steps in educating students. The 2024 awards program focused on innovation in education while recognizing school district programs that solve the challenge with creativity and out-of-the-box strategies. An independent panel of school board members, administrators, and other educators reviewed hundreds of submitted programs and selected the top for national recognition. 
We're proud to recognize that Newport News Public Schools earned a 2024 Silver Award for its Youth Development Program. Newport News Public Schools Youth Development Program is honored for its unique infrastructure of dedicated school-based teams who increase the school division's ability to implement evidence-based programming at every school. This evening, we're proud to recognize the members of the Youth Development Administrative Team who lead and guide our division-wide programming. Please join me in congratulating Bridget Adams, Director of Youth and Family Engagement. Ms. Adams. Michael Nichols, Youth Development Supervisor. Christina Buckingham, Youth Development Specialist. And William Shackelford, Youth Development Specialist. We also want to acknowledge and extend our congratulations to our more than 200 school-based staff who support, engage, and empower our students. Special thanks, of course, are also extended to our activities directors, our youth development leads, our empowerment coaches, our gun violence intervention prevention site directors, live well student wellness coaches, and our school-based club, athletics, and activity sponsors. And I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge um, Ms. Tiffany Smith, who's joining us today, Tiffany Jones, excuse me, Tiffany, who is our coordinator of family and community engagement. Thank you for joining us as well. <laughs> Newport News Public Schools positive youth development initiatives build essential skills and empower students to lead, serve, and contribute from preschool through high school. Youth development emphasizes student empowerment and leadership inclusivity, positive school culture, and mentoring while teaching important social and emotional skills. Student outcomes demonstrate that students who are involved in school activities have better attendance and grades and fewer discipline incidents. Every student is encouraged to participate in at least one club, sport, or other enrichment activity. This award-winning youth development program is unique to Newport News Public Schools. We are the only school division in the state to boast such a robust, comprehensive infrastructure to positive youth development. Division-wide level programming includes Blossom, Balloon, and Flourish Girls Empowerment Programs, the RISE Male Mentorship Program, the Emerging Leadership Institute, the Level Up Elementary Prevention and Intervention Program, and My Brother's Keeper and My Sister's Keeper Violence Prevention Programs. Youth Development also coordinates numerous division-wide programs, which many of our students are familiar with, including the Star Awards, which recognize students and clubs who are making positive contributions to their schools and communities, and STAN, the division-wide campaign to discourage bullying and harassing behavior and to promote positive school culture. And also Celebrate Me Week, a recognition of cultural heritage, which promotes a sense of belonging for students and staff among many, many other activities throughout the school year. Bridget Adams, our superintendent, Dr. Michelle Mitchell, and our school board member, our vice chair, Dr. Terry Bess, were recognized during the National School Boards Association's annual conference in New Orleans earlier this month. The school division, along with other Magna Program Award winners, is featured in the April issue of the American School Board Journal. So again, to this wonderful, uh, central office space team, we say congratulations and thank you for all your hard work. Do you want to take a picture? At this time, we'll take about a nine minute break. 
uh, so that our honorees and our student guests and their families may leave if they desire to do so. You know, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the board meeting. Uh, during this time, our viewing audience will have an opportunity to view this month's school board spotlight. So we'll stand in recess for about nine minutes. Thank you. For many sports fans, March Madness is the most anticipated event of the year. But March just got more exciting, with Newport News Public Schools hosting March Mania at Menchville High School. For the second year, the Family and Community Engagement Team hosted this exciting weekend event for all families to enjoy. On the main court, various high school student teams faced off against adult teams. Both male and female staff were victorious against the combined junior varsity and varsity teams. But the student all-stars finished the day with a hard-fought win over the Newport News Police Department, who love using basketball to build positive relationships across the city. In between games, generous local businesses donated prizes to some excited winners. Meanwhile, in the smaller gym, 150 students participated in a series of age-appropriate basketball clinics. Basketball coaches from various NNPS high schools ran groups of energetic students through advanced drills to sharpen their ball handling skills. But March Mania offered families even more. Educators, along with Minchville's Air Force JROTC cadets, hosted a variety of fun math activities for all grade levels. Each of these math-related games use items that can be found at home, so families can reinforce important math skills anytime. Another great family game that flexes the brain is chess. Volunteers with Hampton Roads Chess Association taught 100 students how to play, many learning for the very first time. And throughout the hallways, community partners and educators offered a range of valuable local resources focused on character building, math mentoring, and mental health. With an amazing collection of sports and educational activities for all ages, 540 people enjoyed everything that March Mania offered this year. Throughout March, Women's History Month honors the remarkable contributions of women to history, culture, and society. Meanwhile, young ladies at Greenwood and Riverside Elementary Schools are paving their own path to success through computer science. Once a week, students at both schools start their morning with Girls Who Code, a fun and engaging club experience for interested third through fifth graders that aims to close the gender gap in the career field of technology. Teachers and instructional technology coaches set up hands-on activities and fun challenges to introduce the young ladies to coding and programming languages. Through these experiences, the girls learn how to problem solve, think creatively, collaborate with others, build confidence by sharing their ideas, and grow as strong leaders. By participating in Girls Who Code, the hope is that many of these young ladies will pursue future careers in STEM fields. But before that day comes, Girls Who Code will help them now as they create strong bonds through sisterhood, learn the basis of computer coding, and make a positive impact on their community and the world. Middle School Volleyball wrapped up its 14th season with four different schools represented at the girls and boys tournaments hosted at Warwick High School. In eight of the last nine seasons, Ella Fitzgerald and Gildersleeve have met in the girls championship game. And one of these teams has been in every tournament over the past 14 seasons. So it was no surprise to see these teams vying for the championship crown again this year. But after settling for runner up the last four seasons, the Gildersleeve Seahawks won this year's girls' championship. This was the second year coaching at Gildersleeve for Coach Juan Puentes, who also teaches and coaches at Minchville High. Better known as Coach Lowe to his players, he attributed the team's success to strong serves and crisp passes on offense. 
Gildersleeve and Ella Fitzgerald are now tied with six volleyball championships each, setting up a dramatic 2025 season. On the boys' court, Crittenden faced off against Washington. The Crittenden Cougars were making their second appearance ever in the championship round, while the Washington Bay Sabres were hoping to reverse last season's outcome where they lost the tournament game to Huntington. Washington's young team won the first set, but Crittenden fought back, forcing a third set. Ultimately, the Washington Bay Sabres prevailed as citywide champions. For adapted physical education specialist, coach Susan McCulloch, this was her third season coaching at Washington. This year's team didn't have a height advantage over other schools, but they communicated well, developed as strong student leaders, and had a great desire to win as a team. Washington's boys have now earned three tournament wins in the past 14 seasons of middle school volleyball. Fourth graders from Discovery STEM Academy and Newsom Park Elementary visited the Mariners Museum for an exciting trip back in time. The field trip aligned perfectly with the students' exploration of the American Civil War and the historical maritime battle between the USS Monitor and CSS Virginia. The Mariners Museum hosted an ironclad marvels field experience specifically for the students enrolled in each school's STEM-themed magnet programs. The in-depth and engaging educational program tied in with the fourth grade pacing guide and emphasized relevant Virginia standards of learning. Students toured the Mariners Museum's award-winning exhibit, Ironclad Revolution, using a scavenger hunt card to focus their exploration on the Battle of Hampton Roads. By viewing artifacts from the wreck of the USS Monitor, reading historical documents, and listening to personal accounts, the students were fully immersed in learning about a significant moment in American history. As the students further explored the USS Monitor Center, they learned about different careers at a museum, including the job of curator to manage collections, research artifacts, and care for them while they're displayed. Students then dove into a hands-on STEM activity to simulate the various jobs of divers, researchers, and team managers as they explored a cannon retrieved from the monitor's wreck on the ocean floor. The entire learning experience was free for every fourth grader at Discovery STEM Academy and Newsom Park, with Mariner's Museum covering the cost of the educational trip. Newsom Park Elementary celebrated Read Across America Week with a community of readers. Reading specialist Barbara Brinker invited guest readers to visit every grade and classroom. Fourteen excited readers took time to read, including NMPS Superintendent Dr. Michelle Mitchell, city leaders, community partners, retired educators, and a former Newsom Park student. Beyond reading grade-relevant literature, these special guests also shared a little bit about how reading is important in their careers, what they enjoy about reading, and what some of their favorite books are. Barbara Brinker also worked with each grade to combine reading with classroom learning experiences through the theme, Building Literacy Through STEM. Every grade level STEM challenge was introduced by reading a book. The style of each STEM activity varied across grades, since every challenge was designed to align precisely with their grade level content. Through these hands-on and engaging lessons, students worked in teams to blend literacy, STEM, and various content areas to tackle a real-world challenge. By showing students the benefits of becoming a lifelong reader and expanding their scope of how much we can learn from reading, Read Across America Week was an important step to help the Newsom Park Navigators find their own love of reading. I hope you enjoyed this month's school board spotlight. We're going to change our agenda up just a tad. Um, we're going to go ahead and move to our personnel actions that we have on the agenda for this evening. So, Dr. Mitchell. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. 
tonight. I Actually, I need to vote. We right. need to. You we'll need to vote, vote first on okay. this. <laughs> so, do I have a motion <laughs> to approve the personnel actions? Yes, Madam Chair, I move to approve the superintendent's personnel recommendations for John Downer, assistant principal, location to be determined. Michelle Gunter, assistant principal, Stony Run Elementary, and Dr. Steve Pollard, assistant principal, Sanford Elementary School. Great. Do so, I have a second? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? Okay, now please call the roll. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Alger. Four. Amon. Four. Best. Four. Brown. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries seven zero. Congratulations. Congratulations. I was so eager. So now, Dr. Mitchell, would you please uh, introduce us to our new family members? Thank you very much, Madam Searles Law. Tonight, I would like to introduce our newest members of our team. And as I call your name, if you don't mind standing so everyone can uh, get to see who you are, I'd like to first introduce Mr. John Downer as the new secondary assistant principal for the school year of 2024-2025. Um, he, uh, his location will be to deter be determined. Mm -hmm. Mr. Downer has an education specialist degree in educational leadership with a concentration in administration and supervision from Old Dominion University. He currently works as the lead social studies teacher at Woodside High School. And I might add, he also, if I am correct, is the teacher of the year, was the teacher of the year mm -hmm. last year for Woodside High awesome. School. Um, a phenomenal teacher. Um, we, we certainly are looking forward to working with you. If you have anyone with you that you would like to have acknowledged, um, please feel free to have them stand and we'll give them a round. Okay, if you would please stand so we can see you and acknowledge you. And thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Ms. Michelle Gunter as the new assistant principal at Stony Run Elementary School for this current year, 2023-2024. She has a master's of education degree in educational leadership with a concentration in pre-K through 12th grade from Regent University. She currently, prior to this moment, was working as the administrative assistant at Stony Run with Newport News Public School. She has, throughout her career, been a teacher and an assistant principal, and she actually taught in Newport News some years ago. So we were happy when you came back as an administrative assistant, and we are certainly happy to promote you to an assistant principal. Do you have family and friends with you tonight? I do. Okay. I have my daughter with me, Alyssa, and I have my friend with me, Dr. Stafford. And our last that we would like to recognize tonight, I'd really like to introduce Dr. Steve Pollard as the new assistant principal at Sanford Elementary School for this school year, 2023-2024. Dr. Pollard has a doctorate of education from Regent University. He currently works as an elementary teacher with Chesapeake Public Schools. He has also worked as an elementary teacher for Virginia Beach Public Schools, and we are excited to have you join our team. Welcome to Newport News Public Schools, Dr. Pollard. So and if you have someone with you, you'd like to have them stand? Yes, I do. Um, so over here is my mom, and I have two of my friends here. This is Ashley, and this is Anthony. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to our team. And I would like to ask Dr. Van Dyke to please stand because we appreciate you being here. He is the principal at Sanford Elementary and I'm sure you two will be a great team for the remainder of the year. Thank you. And that concludes our new and newest um, employees. Perfect, thank you. So now we're gonna let you all, if you wanna go celebrate and have a meal or whatever, give you'll have a moment to We'll give you a moment to leave before we go on with our uh, meeting, but you're very welcome to stay for the duration if you choose. <laughs> Don't be shy. Don't be shy. <laughs> Okay, 
Hey, during our regular, regularly, excuse me, I cannot <laughs> speak tonight. During our regular meetings, we provide time for the public to address the school board. These opportunities are scheduled in the early part of our agenda and towards the end of the meeting. I will say that we have cards that will take us through our allotted 30 minutes and depending upon how we do at the mic, I will petition the board for an additional um, uh, 10 minutes. As advertised, citizens may submit comments via email up to 30 minutes prior to our meeting time to be included in the official meeting record. For those of you joining us in person, the board considers this an opportunity to listen to your comments. Please understand that we will consider your concerns. We ask that you comply with our three minute time limit. As you begin your comments, a green light will come on. A yellow light signals that you have 30 seconds remaining and a red light and beep indicates your time is up. As your name is called, please come forward. Natalie Chamberlain, Reverend Natalie Chamberlain. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Mitchell. I wasn't sure I'd get to be first tonight. <laughs> I'm Reverend Natalie Chamberlain, pastor of Hilton Christian Church, a congregation who welcomes and embraces people of all genders and gender identities. I'm a citizen and resident of Newport News. I've been addressing this board for the past several months. I've addressed issues of morality, faith, and safety. The most important points I have made have to do with the increased danger trans students experience under the policy so nonsensically called protection of trans students. Trans students are also much more likely to deal with mental health crises, including suicidal ideations and attempts than their non-trans counterparts in the district. I believe wholeheartedly that most of you care passionately about the children and youth in your care and that you recognize that this policy as it stands is ill-conceived. It is also quite obvious that you're unable or possibly unwilling to change it. Therefore, I directly address you, Dr. Mitchell. You can change this before the start of business tomorrow if you choose. Please, change the policy back to what it was before your procedural changes were implemented. Protect the children you've been hired to care for. Good evening, um, Dr. Mitchell, um, Board Chair Searleslaw, and Vice Chair Dr. Terry Best, as well as the rest of the board. Um, my name is Mary Voss. I'm an NNPS teacher, parent, and graduate, and I'm also Secretary of the Newport News Education Association, the Educators Union in Newport News. Um, uh, to just start off on a side note before I move into some NNEA updates, um, I do want to remind the board that the NNEA and VEA have both released formal statements opposing Yunkin's discriminatory guidance that targets trans and other LGBTQ plus students. Uh, Yunkin's guidance was implemented last fall without a board vote, and the public deserves a vote on this matter in order to know uh, where our elected officials stand on the topic of discriminating against vulnerable students. Um, if a vote to allow board members to vote on controversial procedures is needed to call a board vote on Youngkin's guidance, um, please let's get that done as soon as possible. Um, moving on to some important NNEA announcements. Um, I'm pleased to share that at the VEA convention this past weekend, out of over 100 VEA locals across the state, our local union, the NNEA, was selected as winner of the statewide VEA fund for political activism. In addition, our local VEA Uniserve office posted the third highest membership increase in Virginia. Um, so we have great things happening in NNEA. And I want to invite NNPS <laughs> employees to visit our website at NewportNewsEducationAssociation.com to learn more about us and about the benefits of membership. Um, in addition, the NNEA is making good progress with our authorization card campaign to win collective bargaining rights, also known as contract negotiations for NNPS employees. Um, so again, I uh, invite NNPS employees to check out our website. We have a section called authorization cards um, that they can click on for more information and we can, um, they can connect with us and we can uh, help them uh, 
uh, get information on and sign their authorization card. Um, we've already exceeded 50% in one employee category and we look forward to hitting a majority in other categories soon. Uh, contract negotiations would provide NNPS teachers and staff a seat at the bargaining table to negotiate for improved working conditions. Of course, teacher and staff working conditions are student learning conditions. So giving employees a voice in the details of our contracts will also help our students and their families and the community. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Matt DeGrave. Good evening, school board members. Good evening. Um, my name is Matt DeGrave. Uh, I am a parent um, here in the city of Newport News. My kids go to school, both my kids now. I have a couple of things. Um, so on the lighter note of items, the clear plastic backpacks that are there are not of poor quality, but my son has already gone through three of them with all of the books and Chromebooks that he's had to carry. And then when he goes to go get more, they're not available for him. Um, one of the things that I would like to ask, is it possible that we buy our own or make more available? I understand that that's, you know, they got to come in as their purchase and I'm sure lots of other kids are having the same issues. Um, on to more serious notes, um, uh, Governor Youngkin's trans policies are not great. Um, I realize that the school board hasn't voted on them to, to bring them up and has come up with their own MALA policies. But um, under Governor Northam, um, the policies, while they may not have been great, they were developed you know, with kids in mind to protect students um, who are vulnerable in, in the Newport News City Public School systems. I really think we need to stick with those policies that are out there because we did, you just we're here to protect the kids. It's it may be a small minority of kids, but if we could prevent a set of kids from feeling like the only way that they can continue to live is to commit suicide or to to feel better is to commit suicide or something like that, it's not great. We need to find them the services that they can, and we also need to show that um, we will protect them from parents who may not be as willing or open to discussing these issues. And something that came up tonight, I had a little bit more prepared on that to talk about it, but you guys will probably hear a lot more. So um, I guess with that, just um, um, please reinstate Governor Northam's policies that he came up with. Um, something that came up tonight that was of interest, I need to do a little more research into. Um, uh, Doug Brown uh, apparently has been asking his church that he's a member of to bring a church-led program into the Newport News City Public School Systems. Um, I don't know if it's been brought up to the school board yet, Apparently, this um, program is called LifeWise Academy. Uh, from what I have seen, um, the church itself is very political, so they're not an apolitical group. And I would just like to ask the, the city board, uh, the school board, <laughs> to not um, adopt any of these policies and, as a matter of fact, to vote. The fact is, is that students are allowed to pray in school if they wish to. There's no law against that. There's no law against teachers praying in school if they wish to or expressing their religious um, preferences. However, we can't have outside sources coming into the schools and potentially proselytizing to students. Um, I, I disagree with that. I, I need more information on this myself. This is something that just came up. But um, if that is the truth, I, I, it is pretty egregious separation or a violation of church state separation. And I would appreciate it if the school board looked into that and oh, my time's up anyway, but thank you for hearing me out. Thank you. Eric Burton. Eric Burton. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. My name is Eric Burton. I'm with Noport News Transportation. As you all seen last time when I was here, I'm key driver for one of our schools. Our, one of our concerns right now is the safety on the buses. And I don't want to go into too many details on some of it because this is public, you know, this form is. But these metal detectors we have are getting bypassed daily with items, stuff is getting on the buses. As you all could seen in the news a couple months ago, you know, there was a knife report on one of the buses and the police had to go out to it. Also, in the area surrounding us, 
which is also the same students that move out of our area and come to this area, they have reported a bullet on one of the buses and other weapons. We have no way of knowing when these are on the bus. There's no way to check for it. We're not allowed to do anything about it. And we hear these students all day long talking about how they're defeating our metal detectors because we have 70 of them on our bus and we listen to them and they don't realize that we're hearing it. One thing I'm asking is this, if we can take our safety a little more seriously and not just put just the metal detectors up, but constant review on how they're getting around them and how we can adjust for that. Another thing is the safety at the bus stops and at the schools. We're having a lot of issues with our bus loops at our schools. By law, when our buses are loading students or discharging students, we cannot have other vehicles going past those buses. That is why there is a bus loop with a physical divider between us and the parking lot. But there are schools that are bringing parents into that bus loop now because it's convenient. Because of that, we do have one school that they have to use their stop sign. They have to have the stop signs out every time they pass that bus, $250 ticket. We're at the point now, do we have to do that in the bus loops? Are our bus loops no longer safe? One of the schools that I'm at, every day, I wish it was once a week or less, but every day I'm going to remind parents, please don't come through here. You're shooting right past my bus, going about 10 to 15 miles an hour. You're not even slowing down for a crosswalk while I have students coming and going. We just had a student yesterday almost hit at our school because people are not reading the signs, they're not obeying them, but yet our answer is from the school, for most of these schools is, what do you want us to do about it? So we're asking your help to help enforce the rules that are currently there and the laws that we have for our students' safety. One last thing for y'all is due to numerous requests that we have seen from teachers and coaches and staff is when we take them on field trips, we drop them off and we leave them. They are afraid if they ever have to evacuate or something happens, how long it will take for us to get back to them. Because we might already be at home, then we got to go back and get the bus and then get to where they're at. The other thing is just recently, yesterday, we had a group of kids stuck in another city because that driver couldn't get to them. We had nobody for them. It took hours to get them. Y'all have a great day. Adam Morrow. Adam Morrow. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the school board. Um, last month I came up here, I told you I had a petition with 200 signatures on it. This asking you to overturn Governor Yunkin's transphobic policies. I pointed out that that was more signatures than some of you had won your seats by. That number's, uh, the number of signatures gone up. There's 250 on it last I checked and it could be more now. That is more than several of you on your seats by. I'm not, I'm sure you're all very passionate about supporting the Newport News School Board and the Newport News Public Schools. If you want to be able to keep doing that from your positions, you might want to be begin reconsidering your stance on this. Thank you. David Brickman. Hello. Um, thank, I'd like to thank uh, the board for letting me speak today and for responding to my emails, um, clarifying that the decision-making power with respect to the implementation of the model policies um, lies with the superintendent, and so I'm I'd like to address the history of, of my previous comments before the board to the superintendent um, today. The reasoning that we have to, or the, the claim that we have to implement the pot the procedure this way in order to comply with the law is not meaningful. Uh, it's not necessary to protect Newport News Public Schools from litigation because there wasn't any enforcement action from the state the first time. 
that model policies were introduced uh, and people did or boards did or did not comply with them. Um, the law also says that the policies provided by the Virginia Board of Education are to instruct compliance with state, federal, and case law. And that's explicitly the antithesis of Youngkin's model policies. It's to, the, the goal is to create new case law to challenge the understanding of gender identity as a part of sex under, um, as far as the courts are concerned. The procedure saying that we will make every effort to respect trans students, except for in the immediately following sentence, using the chosen name in conversation um, is very transparent and frustrating. Um, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Ash Chegulam. Good evening, Dr. Mitchell, members of the school board. I'm here to talk about Governor Youngkin's LGBT policies yet again. It has been five months since these policies were unilaterally implemented by Dr. Mitchell, five months of pain and suffering for transgender students in your care. Tonight, I want to speak to the backers of Policy JPP on this board. I'm not gonna name names, but you know who you are, and I'm reasonably certain we know who you are too. I want to confront you tonight with the people on your side, as it were, in this issue. People like Oklahoma State Senator Tom Woods, who just days after the murder of a student in his district referred to LGBT people as filth who do not have a place in our society. People like the state superintendent in Oklahoma, Ryan Walters, who helped fuel hate with policies strikingly similar to your own. Those same people have ties to white supremacist and dominionist groups, groups that seek to broaden the scope of persecution beyond just queer people, but to everyone who does not fit their mold. Groups focused on anger and hate and moving us back as a society. But to what end? I want to ask you this. What does your ideal society look like? What is your goal here? What policy goals, what substantive changes do you have that aren't based on simply rolling back the gains made by people that aren't you? I know you might think what I'm about to say is a bit of a stretch, but building any society, better or worse, starts at school. It's the only thing that we all have in common in one form or another. I want, you to, want to encourage you to imagine this. What will you do when you're finally done with this project, finally done stripping away the rights from all but your in-group? Imagine what your society would look like, how it would feel living in a community hollowed out from the inside, a community stripped of the diversity and difference that is so core to the human experience, where anything unique is crushed or frittered away and so much beauty has been destroyed. Only then will you be able to look back on the society that you've built for yourselves, and only then will you weep over it. If that's what you want, by all means, keep Governor Yonkin's policies in place. Lay the groundwork for that ending. Or, if you're courageous enough, do what's right. Repeal Governor Yonkin's policies and let our society thrive. Free from fear, free from oppression, and free from hate. And I want to end with this final point. The hyenas that you've set upon your queer constituents will come for you next. No matter how many people you feed them, they will never be satiated. The only way for us to keep our community safe is to steadfastly refuse the hyenas demands for further meals and let them starve in the face of our diversity. Thank you. Valerie Fashion. Good evening, Dr. Mitchell and school board members. My name is Valerie Fashion, and I'm a grandparent, and I'm also advocating for my grandchildren in the thousands of schools in Newport News School District. My grandson is in the kindergarten, and since entering the kindergarten in August of 2023, three mocking periods, 135 days, he has not brought home not one spelling word. However, he's being given a spelling test every week on Fridays. This is not acceptable, and I do not understand why this board allows this to happen. And I would like to know what is the name and the date of the study 
and a research that this school district is using that shows that students learn how to spell words better without being given any words to study. Right now, this district has hundreds of fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth graders that are reading on the third, second, first, and beginning reading levels. Being a bookless school district is not making the majority of students in this district career and college ready. Why was this bookless curriculum chosen for Newport New School District? Also, as a grandparent and as a joint guardianship for my grandson, I called Ella Fitzgerald to ask to be placed on the email list and to be placed on the phone call list so that I can understand and know what's going on in school every week. They told me they can only call one person of the family. That was discouraging. And also, without an education, our students will be eliminated for opportunities in education, corporate America, entrepreneurship, and the public sector. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Carl Breckman. Good evening. Um, I'm a parent who had a child come through the uh, Newport News school system uh, from PEEP all the way through graduation. You graduated in 2012. Uh, talking uh, about the Special Education Advisory Committee and the review of the Special Education Annual Plan. Um, just briefly going over the website tonight, I was I noticed um, you know the membership has not been updated since 2020. Um, the committee is supposed to be made up of a majority of parents. Um, on the 2020 roster, there was only two parents out of a, um, and I think, I don't know, 13 advisory members from the school. Um, so let's see. Also, yeah, there's 13 consultants members um, they couldn't find any policies and procedures for special education only operational guidelines and when I was on the committee over 15 years ago the state had said you can't call them operational guidelines you have to call them um, you know policies and procedures I don't see any forms there I don't know what date the policies and procedures have been updated um, I was wondering about the Part B flow through funds, um, how much has been budgeted for uh, preschoolers to get extended school years, how much has been budgeted for school age children to get extended school year to help address those uh, particular needs. Um, so, yeah, that's all. Thanks. Thank you. Board members, we've reached 30 minutes. Um, do I have a motion to extend until we go through the rest of the cards? It's, it's four at this time. Do we have any more? Okay. <coughs> do I have a motion for us to extend time? Okay. So moved. Thank you. Second. And please call the roll. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Alger. Amen. Four. Bess. Four. Brown. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries mm -hmm. seven zero. Thank you. Uh, next uh, to the podium is Ron Lee, Ronald Lee. Hi. I want to say that I really think you guys do an amazing job generally. I uh, would vote for the vast majority of you guys if it was my choice and Dr. Mitchell pretty sure I would hire you I think you do a great job and I think you guys do a hard job and even if you're being authentic um, it's got to be tough when you run for office you tell people about yourself and you hope that those people believe in you and when you don't measure up to them it's got to be it's got to be hard and I think that most of you guys have the best of intentions, and that's admirable. What I can't understand, Mr. Brown, is when I looked at 
who donated to your campaign, how you must have presented yourself, because you had quite a few of Democrats donate money to your campaign. Um, your church is a political organization. They talk more about politics than Jesus. You guys do training from wallbuilders.org, an election-denying organization that teaches history, biblical citizenship, and all kinds of other things. Mr. Brown, do you think that slavery was not so bad in America? I know you've seen the videos, the crazy things that are said in that church, and you would ask them to bring LifeWise to Newport News. That tells me that you agree with what that pastor says and you buy into what they say and that you're on board. And it also tells me that you weren't authentic when you ran for office. There's no way that those people would have donated to you if you would have told them who you are. So while I love all of you guys, I think you guys are doing a great job, I will be here exposing who you are until the day you resign. And I would like to ask you that today is that day that you resign. Michael Burnett. Members of the board, Dr. Mitchell, thank you so much. Um, my name is Reverend Michael Burnett. I forgot to use my honorific on the card, but just for fun. I serve multiple congregations in Newport News that share a mission of seeking and serving the divine image in all people, respecting the inherent worth and dignity of all people. And so, of course, I'm here to speak yet again against Procedure JBP. And here I got to be real honest with y'all. I am exhausted with this conversation, and I know y'all are too. Every tool in the box has been pulled out for this. We've talked about all the grand sweeping ethical things. We've talked about separation of church and state, and we know those who are gonna intermingle church and state are gonna be clever enough to know how to do so within the bounds of legal precedent. We've talked about how this procedure was implemented without a vote, and we've even got a policy right now, policy CH that's being workshopped and possibly being voted on next month to prevent that from happening in the future, but that doesn't go back into race procedure JBP. We've had personal entreaties to Dr. Mitchell to use her still existent authority to go back and rescind that procedure. We've talked about the danger that this poses to students, that there are statistically, that there are, there are, there are data-based evidence that this will harm students in your care. And from where I'm sitting, none, none of it seems to be sinking in. So I'm exhausted. I know that you serve first and foremost the students, and that's, or at least that, that is the motto. Although from all the advocacy I heard up until the implementation of Procedure JBP, from so much of what I've heard from campaigns, it seems like the de facto alliance is to the parents and not the students. And frankly, if we're being real, real, the allegiance is to Richmond and not even the parents of Newport News. I understand the desire to keep Richmond happy right now. I understand there are lawsuits pending and possibly more if these procedures stay on the books. And keeping the Attorney General's office happy is important and significant to keeping our funding flowing and keeping things going well. But I have to ask, for that queer student who had an ally in a beloved teacher up until November, whose one lifeline to their personal happiness is now forbidden from calling them their chosen name or pronouns. Is Richmond gonna foot the bills for that teacher's therapy bills when they're named in that student's suicide note? Thank you. Effie McMillan. Hi, uh, my name is Effie McMillan. I'm here again to talk about, uh, like a lot of people here tonight, the policies regarding trans students. And I'd like to bring your attention to a section in particular uh, where parents are explicitly permitted to opt their child out of using facilities, quote, 
where state or federal law requires schools to permit trans students to share otherwise sex segregated facilities. And specifically, this part of the policy is framed as an issue of privacy and safety, not, of course, for the children of a protected vulnerable class, but for the other children who might have the inconvenience of having to share a room with them. Now, I'm just wondering, where are the provisions that, say, can allow someone to opt children out of having to share facilities with those who practice minority religions? Uh, what about opting out children in order to protect um, straight children's safety and privacy by making sure they never have to share a locker room with a queer student. Um, I mean, I would expect similar, if not identical policies to make sure parents can keep their child away from anyone they consider to be other, unless, of course, the board thinks that trans children pose a specific threat to non-trans non children by the very nature of their identity and existence. But of course, that would fit the very definition of bigotry, and if any of you do hold that view, I'd really appreciate such an affirmation in writing, perhaps in an up or down vote. Um, just a thought. I have no idea if any of you are individually bigoted, um, but every month that you allow these bigoted policies to stay on the books in your names, you are effectively doing bigotry. And I understand that there has been some worry that the school board may open itself up to legal challenges by reversing these policies, but all that says to me is that you, who have been given direct mandates to think of children's well-being, are willing to let select vulnerable children get thrown under the bus to avoid litigation. And if that is truly where your moral calculus lands, well, I won't need that in writing. Your passivity and silence on the issue is all that I need. Thank you. Gabri Marquez. Do we have any other cards at this time? Thank you for your comments and thoughts this evening. Uh, we do appreciate you taking time to come and share. We'll now move on to section three, the consent agenda, which includes 3.01 minutes from the regular meeting. March 19th, 2024, 3.02 minutes from the special meeting and work session. Mark, March um, 5th, 2024, 3.03 .03 minutes from the public hearing. March 12th, 2024, 3.04 financial reports, including the revenue report for March 2024, the expense report for March 2024, and the child nutrition reports for March 2024. 3.05, the personnel report. 3.06, resolution to appoint hearing officers to hear teacher grievances. 3.07, VSBA at large seat nomination for Douglas Brown. And 3.08, budget transfer. At this time, can we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam Chair, I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Okay. Madam. Yes. Uh, I have, um, before we do approve the agenda, I'd like to remove or make a motion to uh, move one of the agendas off the consent agenda. Okay. Which is 3.07, VSBA at large seat nomination, Douglas Brown. Um, do I have a second for the removal of that 3.07? I second. Okay. All right. Is there any discussion for the removal? All right. Madam Clerk, if you could call the roll. So I'm hearing there's amendment to the, um, the uh, May motion to remove um, 3.07, and that's what the board is getting ready to vote on, the mm -hmm. amendment. To move, to, yeah, to, okay. to remove it. Okay. All right. Mr. Harris? Four. Mr. Hunter? Four. Alger? Four. Amen? Four. Best? Four. Brown? Against. Searles Law? Four. Motion carries, six, one. 
now a motion to approve the consent agenda yes now do i have a motion to approve the consent agenda madam chair i move that we approve the consent agenda minus item 3.07 do i have a second second okay any discussion madam clerk please call the roll harris four hunter four alger four amen Four. Best. Four. Brown. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries seven zero. Okay. Thank you. And let's see here. My pages fell and they got a little bit out of order. So let me find my number four. Okay, here we are. All right. We are in four point zero two. Um, let's see, I am looking for the approval of our current, of our policies and new and revised policies, and I'm trying to see where I missed that on my sheet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's four. 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 Is four. that, four. okay. Oh, I, that's right, I want to do the special education. That's what happens when you change up your agenda a little bit. <laughs> so 4.02, we'd like to, um, do an action item for the special education annual plan and we actually heard a presentation dr mitchell thank you very much madam chair during our march meeting as is customary once a year the special education director vivian Vitulo comes before you and presents the proposed spending plan so she presents to you what with input from the SEAC committee as well as others what we would like to spend the funding on. So tonight we are asking you, we are seeking your approval uh, for the proposed funding, spending plan that was presented to you last March. And just keeping in mind, the, the bulk of the funding is to pay for teachers, um, instructional assistance, um, materials and supplies and things of that nature for students with disabilities. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the special education annual plan? Uh, Madam Chair, I move to approve the special education plan IDEA Part B in the amount of $7,076,547 and IDEA Part B peak grant funds in the amount of $207,976. Okay, do I have a second? Second. And any discussion? All right, please call the roll. Harris, four. Hunter, four. Alger, four. Amen, four. Best, four. Brown, four. Searles Law, four. Motion carries seven zero. Thank you. Now the next item on our agenda is four point zero three, the new and revised policies. <laughs> so, Dr. Vigil, thank you very much, Madam Chair. At your March nineteenth school board meeting, Mrs. Tracy Brooks, special assistant to the superintendent, shared over thirty revised and review policies and procedures to begin the review of the policy chapter on students. Since that time, policy committee members have provided responses to your questions. So this evening, the policies are coming before you for your approval. And given the quantity, they have been placed in five groups for your consideration. Great, thank you very, very much. So do I have a motion? Uh, to approve the new and revised policies, and we are going to take them in the five divided categories. So I will read um, the category and then the um, moniker for the actual policy, and then we will do a motion for the others subsequently. So do I have a motion for the administrative related policies, which are J JA, JCB, JEB, JHCA. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to approve the administrative related policies. JA, student policies, goals, priority, and objectives. JCB, administrative transfers of students from one school to another. JEB, persons for whom education will be free. And JHCA, open slash closed campus. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Harris. 
Four. Hunter. Four. Alger. Four. Amen. Four. Best. Four. Brown. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries seven zero. The next set is under the category of student assignment to schools and programs. Do I have a motion to approve JCA, JFAB, JFBD, JG, and JGA? Madam Chair, I move to approve the policies under student assignments to schools and programs. JCA, assignment of students to school, JFABB, foreign exchange students, JFBD, magnet alternative programs, JG, assignment of students to classes and grade level, and JGA, assignment of twins or multiples in classrooms. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. Do we have any discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, I just wanted to bring up, um, and I don't know how we do this, JCA, the first sentence, there's some grammatical inconsistencies. Uh, it's at the, by the school board and will be consistent with the desegregation obligations of the established by applicable federal court orders. Oh, so okay. I think a V has to be pulled out to make sense of it. Okay. And I don't know how, if we can do that now or if we have to pull it and bring it back. Yes, so it's really a typo then. Yeah, and we'll be consistent with the desegregation obligations mm -hmm. established by applicable federal court orders, I think. Yeah. Ms. Bratley, what do you yeah, suggest the best way to handle if that? you want to approve it with that correction, correction. you okay. can make the motion to approve it with that correction. Okay. okay. So we'll make I'll the... Move to make that correction as part of the approval. Okay. And I'll send you an email, so... And Sounds good. Works. And do we have a second for that correction of... Second. Of error? Thank you. So I'm hearing that that correction is attached to the main motion. Yes. Is that yeah. I need to so, the so motion the main again? motion was already made to approve them without the correction? Yes. That, yes, so you're using an amendment mm -hmm. to the main motion okay. to approve that, it okay. I'll in the corrected form. And roll then we'll on to, to include the, um, the so correction. So we on the amendment. The amendment and then. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> And which, which number is that one again? JCA. Oh, JCA. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Do we have um, Do we have any dis further discussion? Please call the roll. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Alger. Four. Amon. Four. Best. Four. Brown. Four. Sorrell's Law. Four. The amendment passes seven zero. Now we go back and vote on those um, policies with that correction to JCA. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve these policies for student assignment to schools and programs? Yes, Madam Chair, I move to approve the policies with student assignments to schools and programs with the correction for policy JCA assignment of students to school. Do I have Do a second? I'm no. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Alger. Four. Brown. Four. Best. Four. Amen. Four. Searle's Law. Four. Motion carries seven zero. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the student admission related policies JEC, JF, JFAB, JFABE, JFABF. JFABG and JFBI. Madam Chair, I move to approve the policies under student admissions related policies, JEC, admission of non -public, of non public students for part time enrollment, JF, student admissions to school, JFAB, admission. Twenty JFA admission of postgraduates and JAFBI admission of children of persons on active military duty. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Alger. Four. Amen. Four. Best. Four. Brown. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries seven zero. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the policies 
in the category of student health related policies. Those include JLC, JLCA, JLCC, JLCD, JLCE, JLCF, and JLCI. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the policies under student health related policies. JLC, Student Health Services and Requirements, JLCA, Physical Examination of Students, JLCC, Communicable Infectious Diseases, JLCD, Administering Medications to Students, JLCE, First Aid and Emergency Medical Care, JLCF, School Nurses, and JLCI, Recommendation of Medication by School Employees. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Alger. Four. Amen. Four. Best. Four. Brown. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries 7-0. The final set of policies to get a motion to approve are student activity related policies. JM, JN, JP, and JQ. Madam Chair, I move to accept the student, the student activity related policies, JM, student awards, honors, and scholarships, JN, student volunteers for community and community service, JP, student donations and gifts, and JQ, student fees and charges. Thank you, do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? And please call the roll. Harris, four. Hunter, four. Alger, four. Amon, four. Best, four. Brown, four. Searles Law, four. Motion carries seven zero. Thank you all, and uh, as I always say, thank you so much to our policy committee. Uh, as much as it took to read all of those, can you imagine how it was to review all of those? Mm. So we really do appreciate uh, your time and effort in allowing um, the board time to to give our recommendations as well. So we'll move on to 5.02, the attendance report, 5.03, the membership report, and 5.04, construction report. Board members, you've received a copy of this report. Are there any questions at this time? I know, I'm just moving past that. I want to hear it. I know. <laughs> All righty. So we need to go back and do a report because I was trying to approve the uh, the group of reports. So we got to listen to the report first. So um, let's move on to Section 5, Reports and Information. And we have 5.01, the Virginia Literacy Act. I was not trying to get rid of you, Lori, I promise. I understand. <laughs> And thank you. So, Madam Chair, tonight, Lori Wall, Director of Elementary Teaching and Learning, is here to share an update on the development of our division literacy plan. And it is a component required of all divisions as part of the Virginia Literacy Act, which aims to reverse the trends and improve early literacy outcomes for the Commonwealth's youngest learners. And I will add that Newport News began that process long before it was required and yes, long before other districts. Yes, ma'am. so, Ms. Lori Wall, take it away. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, Searles Law, Vice Chairwoman Dr. Best, members of the board, and Dr. Mitchell. I'm here this evening to share, as you know, an update on the development of our division's literacy plan as required by the Virginia Literacy Act. In 2022, the General Assembly of Virginia passed the Virginia Literacy Act establishing the state as a national leader in enhancing literacy outcomes for its youngest learners. This multi-year implementation is set to commence in the 24-25 school year. In February, the board approved Benchmark Advance as the core instructional resource for our division in alignment with the Virginia Literacy Act mandate that every student in grade K-5 receive core literacy instruction grounded in scientifically based reading research and evidence-based literacy instruction as stipulated by the Virginia Literacy Act. I'm here this evening to discuss another critical aspect of the Virginia Literacy Act that will take effect in the 24-25 school year. The requirement for each division to develop a district literacy plan delineating their strategies to fully fulfill the mandates 
of the Virginia Literacy Act. To facilitate the development of the Division Literacy Plan, a template and instructional guide has been furnished, providing essential support to, vision, to divisions during the creation process. This slide outlines the six integral sections that the plan must encompass. The initial section of the plan is dedicated to articulating the district's literacy vision, including the timing and methods of communicating this vision to various stakeholder groups. Our team initiated the development of a district vision in the fall as part of our efforts to streamline the curriculum. The vision presented on the slide embodies our dedication and the outcomes of this commitment as we strive to equip our students to be active contributors to their community. The second section of the plan details the high quality core, supplemental, and intervention materials selected by the division from the Board of Education's approved list. The third section outlines the evidence-based reading research training that will be employed within the division, including implementation training for the new core program, Benchmark Advanced. The fourth section details the student assessment, screeners, and diagnostic tools that will be utilized within the division. Newport News is among 17 school divisions in the Commonwealth participating in the soft launch of the new K-3 screening tool, the Virginia Language and Literacy Screener, or known as VALS, that is also a requirement of the VLA in the 24-25 school year for all schools in the Commonwealth. Our educators have been trained in using the screening tool and have been providing feedback to the VLP office regarding the new assessment to aid in the final modifications of the assessment to, to be administered by all districts in the fall of 24-25. The fifth section of the plan specifies the resources divisions will use to monitor the literacy progress of their implementation, including expectations for lesson planning, lesson delivery, walkthroughs, and feedback. And the final section of the plan requires divisions to describe how they will involve parents and caregivers in the implementation of student reading plans in grades K through three in K through three, as well as in their child's literacy development. Displayed on the screen is our division's timeline for completing our plan and obtaining board approval in June. The plan must be approved by the local board and submitted to the Virginia Department of Education no later than July 1st. With our literacy vision established, our core program selected and approved, an initial professional development planning underway, we are confidently progressing into our final planning stage. So therefore tonight, I am happy to take any questions at this time about our plan. After that. So my question is, what would you say regarding this plan to a parent with concerns like Ms. Faison? Um, about spelling in particular, spelling. or just about our process in general. So, regarding um, spelling and our process, sure, and her concerns. So, um, I would say that no matter what division that you're in, the Commonwealth has said that our our plan should be grounded in the research, the science of reading research, and evidence-based practices, and that has been laid out in um, the training that we provided over the last few years to our teachers, the, our letters training. They'll also receive training by the Virginia Department of Education next year. And so all of the resources that we're using are also on an approved list by the Virginia Board of Education that are all grounded in reading research and um, evidence-based practice. So um, when we talk about spelling, spelling is a great example of it is a critical skill that kids should learn. It's grounded in um, the reading research and all of the five pillars and it is, um, the evidence says that we are to explicitly teach students how to spell and read, um, and we call that decoding and encoding, and that our resources and curriculum um, establishes that uh, kids are taught how to do that through a very explicit scope and sequence. So parents will know that because our plan will have, what are the resources that you're teaching our students and we will have professional development and resources for our families to partner with us. Okay. Thank you for your answer. And just being a former educator, yeah. educator, I could keep up with you. 
So I, I <laughs> might we suggest this? Yeah, for it even even simpler. simpler. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Um, I, thank you. And I just want to piggyback off of what Dr. Best asked. Um, you know, as a parent, so, a lot it, a lot is online by virtue of these resources. But will we be intending, planning to, able to, I'd like to see us be able to send more things home with families that maybe they prefer the paper or over dinner. They can discuss yeah. what uh, we're doing, mm -hmm. vowel, consonant, vowel, those sorts of things. Because yeah. some families may not have the opportunity to, but some may. Yeah. And to the extent anyone can do a little bit more, it's going to, I think, I think a beautiful piece that our, our uh, adoption committee found that was a real plus for that partnership is that we used to have um, basal texts that were a book, one book with all of our um, stories in it. The way Benchmark advanced this design is that those are consumable. And so what they're reading in school, they're able to annotate and write, but those go home to families then. And on the back of each one of those is actually parent activities. So every time they are in a unit, um, and there are 10 units, those will go home with families um, after each unit. And so that anthology will then almost be going home um, with families rather than we collect them at the end of the year. I think that's a great resource that will really be um, powerful for our partnership. Other questions? Yes, yes, Mr. Brown? I'm gonna stay on spelling. Um, some more questions about that. Thank you sure. for the clarification about the, the spelling being critical to the five uh, uh, components of the science of reading. So give it, if it's given its criticality, yes. what, how often, um, is spelling a part of the curriculum? How much spelling yes. uh, tests do the kids, you know, or do we plan on giving the kids? How much, was, how much is spelling going to be a centerpiece versus, sure. a, versus a supplement? So currently, um, if you were to go into our kindergarten, our first grade, our second grade, where they're learning foundational spelling skills, that's happening daily. Every day, kids are reading and spelling and getting explicit instruction. I think the difference would probably be where we were um, in, in past uh, practice, you might have seen we're memorizing spelling spelling words and you're getting a list and you're saying you have to memorize these in the science of reading you learn that we don't learn by sight of just memorizing words that we look that our brain is wired in patterns and so the neural pathway is that I'm able to read that word because I quickly understand patterns in my brain automatic and so we're teaching students and this new standards outline it won't say um, you need to memorize these however many words, it'll say you need to learn in kindergarten short vowel patterns. And if you know short vowel patterns, you'll be able to spell hundreds of words. And once you learn vowel consonant E and long vowel patterns and, and are controlled in first grade, you'll learn even more words to spell. So it's, it's designed to learn patterns in order to spell and read words. That's by design in our standards, it's by design in the evidence, and it's by design in our resources that we have just purchased. Um, so, okay, hope. Because, I I, so I understand you're gonna, we're gonna recognize, teach students to recognize patterns, yes. which will then help them to spell words. But w at what point, memorization of the word at some point mm -hmm. takes place. So, from the, you know, for, as a parent who's, mm -hmm. who's watching this, you know, isn't, isn't there a list of words that I can teach my child that will help prepare them? Or is that not the case? So there isn't, there isn't a list that of words? That is not a best okay. practice, no. Okay. No. We would say you would learn patterns, and so you would work on spelling words with your child that has those patterns that are within the scope and sequence for their grade level. And as the grade levels move forward, you're learning many more patterns, and you're also reading much more complex text. So you're spelling moves with your reading okay. if that makes sense so if your question is are wor spelling words in isolation a best practice moving forward as a result of the science of reading the answer would be no what replaces that is that we still teach kids explicitly but through patterns and 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 mapping of words and that is within that is happening daily and by the end of the year, what the standard says in first grade is that you should be able to read any R-controlled word, any short vowel word, 
any long vowel word that's a single syllable or it might say multi-syllable. Okay. So it's not just a set of words, it's any word. And I see how that, that's going to be a struggle for a lot of parents, you know, in, in bridging that gap. So are there some resources or some classes that we're going to provide to parents? Yes. Because Absolutely. parents are going to want to help their children Absolutely. to learn to read. Exactly. So how are we how are we planning to come alongside parents and help them understand right. this pattern recognition? So in section six, that's one of the places where it says, how will you uh, work alongside teacher uh, parents? One thing will be through the vowels. Uh, you saw our screening tool is changing to vowels. Through their vowels data, when teachers are sitting and explaining, what does this data say about your child's decoding and encoding or spelling and reading? They would say, here are resources. And if a student has a student plan um, that is required as part of our, our division plan, there ha there's a family resource section. So the teacher is required to be the development of the plan. You understand your student's data, you understand what we're doing with you at home and that's the story of the student of the student plan and our partnership dr best yes I, I, I was gonna let marlon go, oh, marlon marlon go first. no I, I think he i think he hit on it as far as making it simple for the parents, parents. to yes what we call a take-home packet you know mm -hmm. yes when you're traveling to see your grandmother or whatever right. Mm -hmm. the parent and the child can be working on spelling That's no right. matter where they're at, mm -hmm. correct? No, yes, sir. No special software, no, you know, I need to call you to get access to Piece something. Piece of paper and a pencil. Okay. Piece of paper and a pencil. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Dr. Bassett. I know you shared with us some new research, but the research still says that for parents, reading to your children, a hundred percent. Reading with your children mm -hmm. is the best thing that you can do to help your children. Yes. So that's the correct. other side of the research. The so spelling falls under that um, decoding and encoding, but the other part of that um, research is language comprehension. Mm -hmm. And so to expose students to background knowledge, vocabulary, sentence structure, um, and comprehension, those we we always say every night reading with your child or um, your child reading to you will always be um, part of our work that we'll do moving forward. Some things haven't changed, Dr. Bassett. That's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Okay. I, just, oh, yes. I, I just wanna say um, in terms of the VLA, um, I, I'm excited about the changes that are coming ahead um, we still need to push for funding uh, at the state level, making sure that in the long run, they continue to support mm -hmm. because the money Absolutely. has to follow uh, the mandates mm -hmm. and making sure that that happens. Also, the Virginia Department of Education has resources for parents as well. Mm -hmm. And that's something that they can also look to um, in order to get additional support. Uh, with word study and spelling. And those are on our um, division website under our elementary English um, site. So we can, if, if you are talking to parents, that's the place where you could quickly um, get them to. Thank you so much. And thank you for answering our questions. Absolutely, I look forward to coming back in June. We will move on to 5.02, the attendance report, 5.03, the membership report, and 5.04, the construction report. Board members, you have received a copy of this report. Are there any questions at this time? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to item 5.05, .05, comments by our superintendent, Dr. Mitchell. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I will begin my comments this evening by congratulating Crittenton Middle School English teacher, Ms. Shonda Woods. She was named the 2025 Virginia Region Two Teacher of the Year by the Virginia Department of Education in a surprise announcement this past Wednesday.
And while I never remember whether there are 15 or 16 school divisions in Region 2, I'll just say she beat out the rest of them, okay? Other divisions. Um, the Virginia Superintendent of Public Education, Dr. Lisa Coons, joined members of the school board, local elected officials, and Crittenton students to rec and staff to recognize Ms. Woods. She is now one of eight region finalists for the State Teacher of the Year. So she will now be going up against the winners of the other regions in our state. I, on a personal level, have had the pleasure of serving with her. She was a teacher at Huntington Middle School during my tenure of principal, and I am proud to say I actually hired her back then. <laughs> um, we are really looking forward to her working hard to be named the Virginia Teacher of the Year. That is our goal. Newport News Public Schools has once again been honored with the Best Communities for Music Education designation by the Nat National Association of Music Merchants Foundation in recognition of our commitment to music education. We do here in Newport News offer a diverse music curriculum at all grade levels, which includes music instruction, performance ensembles, and community performances. So a very special thanks to all of our music educators who ensure that our students receive quality music education. This past Friday, our community had the opportunity to enjoy our student vocalist in action. More than 600 students performed during the first Newport News Public Schools All City Music Festival right here down the street at Christopher Newport. Performances included middle and high school bands, choirs, orchestras, guitar ensembles, and elementary choruses. So congratulations to all of our student performers. We celebrated the new artificial turf at Todd Stadium with a ribbon cutting ceremony last Thursday. The turf installation was recently completed and the field does look amazing. If you have the opportunity, please take a look. Now, in addition to being used for track and football, lines have been added to create soccer and field hockey fields. Uh, we are looking forward to hosting more athletic events on this brand new field. This is also National Autism Awareness Month. And there are numerous community events taking place throughout April to increase understanding and acceptance and foster support of children and adults with autism. Newport News Public Schools has a wide range of resources to support and advance students. So I thank all of our dedicated special educators, special educators for their service to our students. April is also designated as the month of the military child, when we recognize and honor our military-connected students for their resilience and their courage. Our region is, of course, home to Air Force, Army, Coast Guard, Marine, Navy, National Guard, and Reserve families. As a show of support, we invite all students and staff to wear purple tomorrow, April the 17th, for Purple Up Day to show our combined support for our military students. That concludes my comments this evening, Madam Chair. And as Mr. Hunter says, great things are happening. Great things are happening in Newport New News. Public Schools. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dr. Mitchell and Mr. Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> we will move on to item six, another opportunity to hear from the public. Are there any cards? No, ma'am. Okay, great. So you, you may notice that there is a um, seat empty uh, this evening um, for our school board rep. I am not going to steal his thunder. Mm. We will let him let us know uh, where he has decided to go to school um, for college for his next steps. Um, but there were some commitments that he needed to make this evening. Um, and I'm just beaming up here because that is what this is about. It's about our students taking those really great next steps um, with the encouragement of Newport News Public Schools behind them. Meeting adjourned.
city photos for years. A Scheherazade 